Hello, fan collectors. What I have for you today is a Arvin Industries Incorporated box fan. We look at the badge here, Arvin Industries Incorporated, 110 to 20 volts, 60 cycle AC only. Arvin, model number 7414, made in Columbus, Indiana, USA. It's not a Chinese cheap piece of crap. It's an actual American-built tank with a lot of pride in it. <laughs> so, I got this fan, one, because it's durable. I, I need a box fan to sleep with at night, but I didn't want to buy the cheap Walmart Holmes brand Lakewoods that you see in the stores nowadays. I wanted something legit, and that would run forever. And, uh... This box fan was at a flea market that I've been going to since I was a kid. It sat in a booth, pretty much never being used, underneath a cloth-covered table. Never seen it used, and then a couple of years later, he had the same fan running out a couple of boots down. Same one, and he was selling it this time. Can any of you guess how much I paid for it? Well, if you guessed $5, you are right. And $5 is great for a box fan like this. It was more clean than this. It's just been put through so, so much use. But I got it because the box fan I had before started seizing up and running out of oil. And I didn't have any oil on me. And while looking around seeing if there's any treasure we could find at the flea market, this turned up. And I think $5 is cheaper than a thing of oil. I might be wrong, but I got what I deserve for the money, and it performs just as it should, so I'm happy with that. Although this box fan is starting to seize a little bit too. It's going to need oil. Um, I'll show you here. This is how much it exactly gets used. Yeah. This thing runs about seven, eight hours every night. And it does awesome. It's a little bit rattly when it first starts, but it kind of dissipates. The reason it's rattly is because there's supposed to be rubber surrounds to where the grill goes into. And some of them have been kind of jerry-rigged with tape to work, which was done before I got it. This one just has nothing at all on it, and that's one of the reasons it rattles. But the rubber areas had kind of corroded on the front. When I turn it to the back side, I'll show you that they're all still there. This isn't looking particularly as good either. There's a bit of rust at the bottom, but that was also there when I got it. Here's a sticker that has nothing to do with the fan that my brother just stuck on for no reason. We'll turn it around now. And as you can see, the rubber washers that hold the grill in place, with the exception of a screw being in that one, are all entirely there. I'm not too sure why the front ones went first, but they did. And you can actually see now more of how much this thing gets used. It has one of these universal electric motors made in Owosa, Michigan, USA. People say that these motors are really hard to maintain and keep oiled. But I haven't had any problems with them yet. They seem like small, efficient, economic motors. I mean, this thing is not even the size of my hand. But it does what it's supposed to, and... Uh, because it needs oil, it's a little bit hesitant when it starts up. I'm going to run it on high to... I would start it on low, but it would take it over 10 minutes to get the full speed. So, when I show it running, I'll start with high. And as you can see, the power cord is in... Oh, wait, that's the wrong cord. This is the cord. Gray one right here. And it does... And it looks pretty decent, despite it being as old as it is. 
started on high. It's a two-speed fan, and the knob is located to the side. Actually, it doesn't look like it's high as helping anymore either, but we'll watch it. It's going to be a bit quicker now. This isn't an overly powerful fan either. And low has a very slight difference, but not a very noticeable one. You can hear the rattling probably a bit coming from the grill supports because there's just none here on the front. The back grill is completely silent. It's picking up speed now. <laughs> this reminds me, as a kid, because I actually have been into fans since I was a kid. And I saw a video of a GE box fan. I forget who the publisher was. But he had the same issue when he started his on high, except he wondered why, because his was perfectly oiled. This fan needs a bit of oiling, that explains it a little bit on this one. But he's like, why is it so slow starting? And, uh, it, I'm just reminded of it as I watch this one ramp up speed. All right. While we watch it, let's show you the back. Yeah, there goes the... Yeah. I never run it on high because of how loud it is. See if I show you. See how quiet? And then when I let off. I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's the one that's causing all the vibration. Nah. That is high speed. That is full speed, too. Alright, we'll put it on low. Actually, never mind. I, I made a mistake. The speeds are quite different. The spin down time used to be a lot better on it too when I first got it. I've had it for about half a year. I don't know if I mentioned that. So the spin down time is sometimes good and then it's sometimes really stiff. Looks like it's ac it actually did pretty decent there. But when you start it up, I'm going to start it on low again. Once the motor warms up, it usually has no problem. Especially if you go to high speed.
It needs to sit longer than a day, though, to go through a full startup, like, lasting minutes. It's a really good fan. It really is. Again, it probably could use a cleaning and some other stuff. I mean, it gets used every day. But, I mean, for a 60s-built American fan, I mean, they never let you down like the new ones do. So, table fan, it doesn't matter what kind of fan it is. So, all right, everybody, that is my Arvin 7414 box fan. Stay tuned for more.